Welcome to the video. This is Hooves speaking. Uh, this video is about utilizing a display board to present an army of Warhammer. Now, display boards seem to be a necessity for many dedicated hobbyists, and they're really required for entering Games Workshop's Armies on Display yearly competition. And you know, if you go to Games Day or, or a variety of other tournaments as well, they seem to be fairly common. And sometimes they can be required, uh, just like at Games Workshop. It will probably be a fairly short video, and I'm, it's not about building one or something like that. It's just kind of my thoughts on display boards. I really don't have any really significant experience with display board. I've never actually built one myself. I don't know if I can rightly say that I dislike display boards, but they don't really appeal to me personally as a hobbyist. I find my feelings are similar to appreciating the work of like a historical artist or a sculptor or something along those lines without and and and, and truly appreciating their work and and admiring their artistic skill without feeling any real motivation to duplicate the work or generally try my hand at that artistic genre. When I see an army on a display board I can appreciate the time and dedication that is required to create the display. And I truly do like the narrative that is being created to fit the army. Some of them are fantastic and original um, and just, a, you know, almost like a work of art unto themselves. Obviously, some display boards can be very elaborate and feature a lot of moving parts that involve a lot of time and dedication. And I can sincerely appreciate that effort, but it's really not something that at least interests me personally at this point. You know, I've been in the hobby a long time, and I don't like to close doors necessarily. So, although I've never really been that much of an enthusiast for making terrain and using those types of crafting skills, who knows what the future might actually hold. Personally, though, right now, I have a lot of unpainted models and armies, and it just seems like my hobby focus seems better directed at working down that backlog, if that's ever really uh, a reality. I think I'll probably always have a ton of unpainted models. In that context, a 2x2 two two board seems a little too small to properly fit my hobby aspirations, and anything larger just isn't that practical. I've never actually been to Warhammer World, but when you go in there and you actually are in the exhibits and museum part, I kind of like those types of huge boards that are just oozing narrative and, and oozing ways of displaying models. I find that really appealing, but I'm not going to have that in my you know living room or something like that. The effort to make even just a 2x2 two two display board just seems almost too big. Um, to invest significant time, especially when the display board itself seems so temporary. If I knew that the board acted as a permanent display when the army was not being played, my opinion might be different. But that would entail really too much effort, and the scale is too small for um, really anything but just a very small portion of my collection. I also change my list far too often for that to work uh, repeatedly. I can understand a diorama a little more because the scale is smaller and they provide a permanent display. Really, in many ways, a diorama seems a better version of the display board all around. Not quite as large as the ones at Games Workshop, but just a small diorama featuring one or two models. That seems ideal to me. Although I'd only really make one if I had a duplicate models or something like that. <laughs> I'm not interested in learning or mastering the concept of the display board. I've always hated basing my models in general because I've never really been happy with the result. The simplest methods seem too basic and extra extravagant bases take time that could be applied to painting more models. I view, I view a display board as a giant basing project that utilizes skills and material not really applied elsewhere in the hobby on that scale. I don't mind assembly and painted models, but working with craft glues and styrofoam just doesn't really interest me. It requires me to 
purchase tools that I don't already have and learn new techniques that I don't really know already. And it's really just my per perspective. I mean, frankly, and like I said, frankly, it could change over time. I've already just preferred buying standard terrain kits, if anything. I know some people really love making terrain. And look, like, look, if you enjoy something in the hobby, it, regardless of my opinion, I think that that's absolutely terrific. And I can genuinely appreciate that. I love seeing brand new terrain on the table. Uh, but only if it can be repeatedly used with a variety of different armies and scenarios. In contrast, an amazing display board that will only be used a handful of times just seems a little strange. Despite everything I've said thus far, it might be surprising that I'll be painting a display board in the coming weeks for an upcoming tournament. Now, I attended this tournament last year, this Holy Havoc, and at that point, I didn't bring a board, and it cost me significant points, because it's a requirement um, as part of the painting score. And the way that this scoring works is you need to get a certain amount of points to then unlock the potential to earn more points. Because I didn't uh, fulfill that requirement last year, my painting score was really low. Even you know my, my stuff isn't painted amazing, but had I had a display board, my painting score would have uh, almost certainly been much higher. So I'm a little bitter about that point, and the requirement, given my sentiments about you know being forced to make something. But uh, sometimes I know the PMP does competitions, um, and uh, painting groups do competitions where you're supposed to try to push yourself or make something that you wouldn't normally do. And the display board might be kind of a, a good point for me in some respect. Um, but with regard to tournaments, I, I, do, I do very much respect uh, the tournament organizers' um, ability and right to design their own events and scoring criteria. I mean, just, just because it doesn't necessarily work out in my favor doesn't mean it shouldn't be there. Or in the case. And Holy Havoc is really such a terrain focused tournament where the tables really play the game more than the models to some extent that a display board being a requirement naturally makes sense even if uh, it's not in my interest. So in addition to awarding points I also do recognize that an army would have a distinct uh, advantage just by virtue of having a display board, right? I have no illusions, again, as I said, that I will win Best Painted, given the competition that will be attending Holy Havoc. But I do recognize that if you have, even if you have two equally painted armies, the army that has a display board will win, right? It's just, it, it gives you an edge over your opponents. And it might not even be that... The, the person looking at the armies might not necessarily be even that aware of, of the, that that's part of the criteria that's making them choose one army or the other. It just, you know, the army visually just looks better, even if the painting quality is relatively the same. So, how am I going to jump this hurdle? Well, I'm going to leap over the smallest fence I can possibly jump. And uh, <laughs> my plans for the display board are fairly simple. I'll be going over some of it in upcoming videos about the event. But uh, I've owned an unpainted Realm of Battle board for several years. I think I bought this, oh geez, probably 10 years ago at this point. And I've played like three games on it. Uh, it's not because I dislike the format or anything. It's just, you know, I don't want to pay on play on an unpainted board, but I've never had a lot of motivation to paint it, because again, I think my priority should be painting models, not a hunk of huge plastic. Um, but man, oh man, what a terrible investment. You know, these boards are $300 or something, and it's just been literally, I've been, especially if all the moves have done, those things are heavy. I've been dragging those, that thing around for a decade, and it's just kind of sitting there. Um, <laughs> So, you know, these are hard plastic, they're pre-molded boards, and crucially, they're composed each of two-by-two two portions. So they're perfect for hobbyists like me who are reluctant and hesitate 
and hesitant to make a board from scratch. So my goal is to grab one of those portions, one that maybe has like the hill or some other detail part of it. And I'm just going to paint that thing up and uh, put my army on that. It's very basic, but it works. It gives me the point I need. But I'm also, just to, you know, kill two birds with one stone, I'm planning on adding a piece of unpainted terrain that I think will add additional flavor to the army, you know, just so it has something else to put models around and, and uh, draw the eye and such. Um, and that has also been sitting around for far too long as so many of my ridiculous unpainted collection. So I think all in all, the board I'm thinking of designing will be fairly simple, of some flavor, and it should complement my army and award me some points at the event. Um, probably best of all right now is because um, I have so much to do before the event, um, The my plan should be relatively quick to pull off, so that's, that's another bonus. But I think best of all, the board and terrain can be used in my regular games after the tournament. So, I guess I just need five more tournaments, and my entire board will finally be complete. Alright, so, um, this is a uh, response video to Vince Venturella's Topic of the Week. I'll post a link to his video down below. You can check that out and uh, view his thoughts on it. It's kind of uh, interesting because uh, Holy Havoc's a team tournament, um, so they're, they're designing one board for both teams as, I, as far as I know. And uh, Vince is not a huge fan of display boards, but his teammate Tom seems to really like them. So they have a, a conflicting opinion on this, which is good. I mean, I'm not, not opposed to um, having a different opinions in this hobby at all. Um, and so if you go to that video, you might be able to check out other people's comments, and other people may have made a response video as well. But regardless, thanks for tuning in, and have a good one.